to all the producers, the musicians, the designers. Move us all out to Hollywood, move us all out to New York. Brown books, and you've probably heard about the Illuminati. That's Illuminati. The Illuminati were a secret society dedicated to scientific truth. The Catholic Church ordered a brutal massacre to silence them forever. Some believe that this organization is still around today and that they might be behind critical world events and are even creating some kind of new world order. So when I got a follow invite from some Illuminati recruiter on Instagram, I knew I needed to join. So I asked. He said, are you sure you want to get on with this? There is no turning back. All right, what did I just stumble into? I said, yes. Good, before we proceed, what do you understand about what we are as a body? And I really didn't know what to say. So I Googled the word Illuminati for a definition and it read a sect of 16th century Spanish heretics who claim special religious enlightenment. And I copied and pasted and sent it to him. Then he said, I see. So then he goes on to tell me that I will need to be enlightened by a grandmaster who will help perform my initiation. What is he going to have me do? <laughs> then he gives me the grandmaster's phone number and tells me to contact him on WhatsApp. He says no video calls because their identity must be kept secret until I become a full member. So I did what he asked. I messaged the Grandmaster on WhatsApp saying what the recruiter told me to say. Hail Illuminati. And he responded and he said, hello, who are you and who sent you to me? So I sent him a screenshot of the profile of the recruiter that I'd been talking to. Okay, it would be confirmed in two hours time at the temple, then I would get back with you. And I said, what will be confirmed? Whether you can join or not. See you then. Okay, so what does he mean? They don't know anything about me. What are they going to vote on? But two hours does go by, and he writes back. Hello there. I said hello. He said I have confirmed everything. We can now proceed in your membership into the Illuminati Brotherhood. So I guess they voted to let me in. He then goes over the Illuminati guide. 1. Don't accept anything from strangers claiming to be Illuminati. You must always be truthful to me always. 2. Always wish your neighbor success. 3. If anyone asks you to join the Illuminati Society again, as from now, expect my name is mentioned, black that person. Immediately. Don't talk to him or her. 4. And anything you want to do, Grandmaster, know about it. 5. Do not speak to anyone about the Illuminati except to your me, as from now, expect my name is indicated at the peak of the conversation. May the all-seeing eye guide you. Welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Hello. Uh, that is just a bonus, but I'm going to bring it up another time. But that is not what I'm here to talk about today. Kirk Franklin... I know many of you know him. Uh, many of you probably might be, you know, his fans, but I have not been. I have loathed his kind of song and I've loathed his... I really, I really don't know why. You know, since the very first time I, I cited him um, in the 80s, you know, I've taken this kind of... Um, a kind of disliking for his contents. I must tell you the truth, you know. And so, why I, I want to make this video is that there are some persons who, who are so wise and they are so spiritual. And so their spirituality makes them think that they know it all. And knowing it all means that, you know, you don't tell them what um, the gospel looks like. And so, there are some of them that would, that would be like, tell me where it is in the Bible that there is... A gospel music differently and one that is called secular now so i don't enter into such arguments see let me make you understand that uh, the gospel industry uh the music industry is riddled with satanism now not everybody that has jesus on his songs or in his songs 
that is actually singing for Jesus. There are many that are using that name, you know, just to sell. In Nigeria, for instance, you know that not all the artists, not all the gospel artists, just like you have so many, you know, strange pastors and prophets on the pulpit. So also you have strange human beings that call themselves ministers of the gospel, you know, in the way of singing. Now, so Kirk Franklin has come out to tell us something. I'm going to play the, the tune for you. I'll play it and uh, I'll wait to see if you get the gist in the song. Yo, Kirk Franklin, give me 16. Hear me. Just got back from my sabbatical. I'm one of God's kids. Never thought I'd make it this far, but God did. Whom shall I fear since the most high brought me? Since I've been 100, 50 tried to rob me. He can't cause God's got me. See, I'm God's property. Jesus is prodigy. Dope as ever probably. Always stay in character. Church can make some characters that categorically deny God's character. I don't mean to preach. Just trying to make you think. I was a dirty dish. Now me and God in sync. Like Big and Jay and Nas. The greatest cake of both. The lion and the lamb. we bow down to the goat. I don't want to make no more mistakes with my kid. Okay, for the benefit of those that probably didn't hear that, I'm going to play it again. Hope is ever probably always stay in character. Church can make some characters that categorically deny God's character. I don't mean to preach, just trying to make you think. I was a dirty dish, now me and God in sync. Like Big and Jay and Nas, the greatest cake of both. The lion and the lamb, we'll bow down to the goat. I don't want to make no more mistakes with my kids. The lamb and the lion will bow down to the goats. Now, if you know the symbol of satanism of recent, there is this, you know, um, creature that has the head of a goat, the legs of a goat, and the body of human, and some kind of um, angelic rings, and a central horn with the, you know, the horn. Now, that is the Baphomet. And that is the goat. Now, when he said the lion and the lamb, or the lamb and the lion, now you do not need anybody to tell you that the lion and the lamb is Jesus Christ. Now, that is your gospel artist. That is your musician. That is, you know, I know somebody will come up and say, how are you sure that he is talking about Jesus? Now, you know that naturally, that the, the lion cannot bow down to the goat. So there is no other way you can coin it. Now, there is only one reason why this, this kind of a thing happens. I'm going to show you another video. Of Eminem just released a gospel song confessing his faith in Jesus, but there is a very dark secret behind this song that no one is talking about. The song titled Use This Gospel, which also features Kanye West, is actually a remix of the original version that was on Kanye's album Jesus is King, which dropped on October 25th, 2019. In February 2020, just four months after the original release of this song, which did not have Eminem on it, this video got leaked. So what musician was Kanye talking about that signed a contract saying that they can't say Jesus? Well, on September 18th, 2020, seven months after this video got leaked, Kanye tweeted this. At Eminem, thank you for rapping on the Dr. Dre remix of Use This Gospel. I have always loved and respected you, and I'm honored to have you bless this song. It's also Northwest's favorite Kanye West song of all time. So if this song was already finished in 2020, how come it took them two years to finally release it? Is it possible that a certain individual was under contract which stated that they could not say the name Jesus? Well, before I answer that question, let's just look at the facts. 
Eminem was and he still is one of the biggest artists in the entire world. When Eminem drops a new song, if you like him or not, you're tapping in because you want to hear like, yo, is this a trash verse? Is it a good verse? And as a result, it makes him still one of the biggest artists in the entire world. But as you know, Eminem, his earliest success, it came from some very dark and demonic music. And it worked. It was profitable. I think from like 1999 to 2002, he dropped like three albums. The dude sold like 25 million copies in 1999. Like that is hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So obviously we know it's big money in this secular music industry, especially if you're willing to talk about the dark and the demonic elements just out in the open like Eminem was. But you know what's really interesting? No one talks about this. But do you know Eminem's very first album? You probably don't because I had to look it up. It's called Infinite. But the thing that's really interesting about this album, the very first song on this first album, it tells a story of a dude who is actually wrestling with God, who is actually wrestling with his sinful nature. Take a look at this. This is off the hook of his very first song, Infinite, from that first album that he ever posted, right? And the hook, it says, you heard a hell while I was sent from it. I went to it, serving a sentence for murdering instruments. Now I'm trying to repent from it. But when I hear the beat, I'm tempted to make another attempt at it. I'm infinite. So that's the hook. But also listen to what he says here. It's really interesting. He says, yo, because once you make an instant hit, I'm tensed a bit. And tempt it when I see the, the sins my friends commit. I'm infinite. He's wrestling with this idea of his sinful nature, which we all have come to that point in time. Before we, before we were Christians, we all wrestled with our sinful nature. And that's ultimately played a part in us finding God and, and calling ourselves Christians today. And we see Eminem doing that in his very first song, of the very first album he ever put out. And he's doing that in his own way. He's doing that in the way that he knows how, which is through rhyming, which is through making music. So what am I trying to say? When I was a kid and I was born in 1993. So when these albums were coming out, the, these big smash hit Eminem albums, I was super young, but I was still tapped into almost every single album. And I know all my friends were tapped into this album Every time he dropped the album, we were all tapped in, right? You probably were too. But think about it like this. Imagine if the record labels that he was associated with, and yes, he has his own record label, uh, Shady Aftermath, but the parent company is UMG. So imagine if that record label at the time would have allowed Eminem to lean in to what he was feeling in that very first album of wanting to repent, of noticing the sins of his friends. Imagine if they would have allowed him to lean into that and continue making music on those same types of topics and ultimately getting closer and closer to God and building a fan base that is getting closer and closer to God. Is it Christian rap? It's absolutely, it was not Christian rap, but you can see elements of him referencing the Bible and trying to figure out what the truth is. But you know how many records that first album sold? A thousand copies. Compare that to the 25 million albums that he sold on the three albums after that. He only sold a thousand copies on his very first album. Now, this brings me to the story of Katy Perry. Uh, Katy Perry was said to have released a gospel song at the age of 16. And at that age of, of 16, the, the, the song didn't sell. The gospel song didn't sell. And so she relocated and went off the radar of his parents and, uh, you know, um, disconnected from Jesus. She has completely and, I mean, you know, um, wholeheartedly gone into the worship of Satan. Now Katie herself professed to be a Christian and she used her singing gifts to glorify God as a worship leader. You don't have to, just do all this stuff so God can come to you, he'll... He'll meet you where you're at. And at 16 years old, she produced her very first Christian album, all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Only reason that I live is Christ come down and die for you and me. 
But at age 17, perhaps because her Christian album had not been as successful as she'd hoped, Katy Perry decided to ditch Christian music. She then caught a plane to Los Angeles and there she started her career in the secular world of entertainment. It wasn't long until Katy Perry publicly denounced her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. My upbringing wasn't, I mean for everyone else it gets, I guess it felt like rebellion but really it was just me creating an alternate reality because I didn't care for the reality that I grew up in that was very sheltered and like I said I, I guess I just had had to choose either have parents or just agree to disagree on some some really annoying belief systems. Just when it seemed like things could not get any worse, Katy Perry publicly mocked Christianity at an awards ceremony in front of thousands of people. And hell, a place of gnashing of teeth, continuous burning of skin, and probably Mike Pence's ultimate guest list for a barbecue. Now this is how much, you know, these things, you know, how far these things, are, you know, have gone. But this has to do with the worship of the devil. And you see that the devil is actually obsessed with, with worship. Everything about it has to be with worship. And so, I, I'm, I'm, so I think the question that somebody may be asking could, should be, or could be, but well, why should they do that? Why would someone like Kirk Franklin, for instance, come out with these blasphemous lyrics? Now, it, there's no that reason for that. If you listen to the, the analyst that spoke about the first song of um, uh, Eminem, how that he didn't sell, but then within three years, he released albums that, you know, generated about 25 million copies being sold. And that is, you know, money in great quantity, if there is anything like that. Now, and also I told you about uh, Katy Perry. So it is about the money. And if the devil can get have your soul, he can give you the whole world. He tried that with Jesus. He told Jesus, all these things have been committed into my hands. If you just bow down and worship me, I will give them to you. So the whole world doesn't mean anything to the devil. It just He can give you the whole world for your soul. And but you know that that is deception. You understand? So it is about money. It is about the fame. It is about, you know, coming out. Now look at it this way. Kirk Franklin may have, you know, looked at him. He's been doing this thing at least, you know, I, I, I came to know him, like I said, in the 90s. Now, he's been doing it and suddenly he saw some, you know, small boys and girls. They came up and before you know it, they're up there. And so probably he has been approached and was like, like you can tweak it. You've, you've already have, you know, some fan base already. Tweak it and believe it or not. If you listen to these songs, you are participating in the worship of Satan. I hear something like this, that the lamb and the lion will bow to the goats. I've told you, this is the goat, the baphomet is the goat, and it is the symbol of Satanism. And wherever it is, whether the sign like this, it is the worship of Satan. This is, I'm just showing you now, it is, this, it is, the worship of Satan. It is, you know, um, Satanism in this guys. So it is about the money. It's just about the cloud. And so this is a time to blaspheme the name of the master, the name of the Lord, in order to gain the promotion. And the promotion, you understand, is money. You see, the 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 pull in this thing is that, like someone like Beyonce, Beyonce started from the church. She started from the choir. Now, like the, uh, the, um, Katy Perry that I talked about, you see, the urge is this. You stay within your ambience of Christianity and holiness and reverence to God, and you will do an album that will not sell. And somebody tells you, why not just sign this, this contract and you could make $100 million, you could, you could make $200 million, just one hit song like that. And somehow, now, it depends on what you're looking for. So if what you're looking for is just there, to make it big, you know, the person can, okay, I can't compromise. And so, now your lyrics will be set for you. If you are a, a fan of Beyonce, you will understand that some of her lyrics are so dirty and insulting God. And Katy Perry, the last song that she did, you know, that her father even spoke against it, 
was that I kissed a girl and I felt happy. All right. So, I wouldn't say so much here. I will just allow you to watch now the other part of the, um, the video, what Kanye West said. And I would like you to put your comments in the comment section here. The fact is that as a Christian, if you must, if you must not be polluted, you must guide your heart. If anybody is telling you that, that there is nothing like Christian music or secular music, I am telling you now that not even every song is of Christ. I saw something Apostle do, you know, in his wedding. A DJ played a song that it was later I got to know that it was even a gospel song. But the, the starting point of that song, you know, had no similarity of Christianity. No, no, no. Your love is sweet like me, no, no. You make a promise, then you deliver. You never fail me, no, no, no. What's happened? DJ, please. Somebody change that guy. Dennis, where are you? DJ, please, that should repeat itself, please. The church today is copying the world. And this is a bait from Satan. And somebody may say, but it has the name of Jesus in it. He, he talks about Jesus. No. The fact that it has Jesus in it doesn't make it a gospel song. It doesn't make it a Christian song. Now, it, it's like when you now ask, how, how does a Christian dance? And how does an unbeliever dance? My friend, you should know. You should know. But then let's just uh, let me know. Just let me know what you think about it. I'll be waiting for your reaction in the comment section. And thank you so much for listening. And God bless you. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, from me to you, shalom. The devil took all the producers, the musicians, the designers. Jesus as loud as they wanted to. You